Welcome back to the channel. What you're looking at here are the Bang & Olufsen E8 third generation earbuds, which have some very bold claims on the box and are some of the most premium earbuds on the market today. So these have Bluetooth 5.1, up to 35 hours of playback time, wireless charging, and they claim superior sound. So I'll dive in and show you guys in this video, full tests of everything. I don't want this to be subjective. I wanna actually break it down and show you everything you need to know about these earbuds so you can decide for yourself whether or not they're worth the money for you. Now, I wanna break this video down into several categories. First, I wanna talk about the physical aspects of this earbud. I wanna talk about the case and the buds themselves and also go into a microphone test to show you how good that actually sounds. Then I'll go into the electronics, talk about what these have on board. Then I wanna talk about the app that you can customize the earbuds with. Then lastly, I'll talk about the audio quality before getting into a kind of pro-con list, breaking down my overall opinion of these earbuds and if they're worth the money. But starting off with the physical aspects of these earbuds, let's take a look at the case here. You can see it's entirely wrapped in leather, really nice soft leather, and if you smell it, it doesn't actually smell like typical leather. I was kind of hoping this would smell like my old baseball glove, but it doesn't. It actually just has a nice smooth leather texture there and really no odor to it at all. Then we'll see that they have that kind of really high gloss aluminum chamfer around the, the bottom half right there, which I think is a pretty nice look there. So pretty much any angle you look at, you're going to get some kind of shine from these earbuds and it just makes them look more premium. You also have an LED indicator light on the front on that chamfer. So pretty sleek. They put that down there. And then on the back, we have our hinge, of course, right above the USB Type-C charging port, but that's not the actual, that's not the only way you can be charging these. They also have Qi wireless charging, which is really nice, guys. I've been saying that for a long time. All true wireless earbuds should have Qi wireless charging. It's just such a nice feature to have where you don't need wires. You just have a charging pad. You put your earbuds on there. You put your phone on there. You put your watch on there. It's just I'm waiting for the day when they all come out and they all have that. So it's nice that they're doing that right here. So 35 hours is the combined time. There's seven hours in the earbuds. And then I guess that leaves 28 hours in the case if I did that math right. So definitely a pretty hefty battery. Overall, the size of the case though is not especially large. It's slightly larger than some other cases we see, but it's about the same size as the Sennheiser case right there. Still magnetic closure, but you can see that you open it and it's just a really gentle, smooth feel right there. But you will also see the earbuds are right there. They're held in with magnets. So if we shake it, you'll see that pretty much any amount of shake, they don't come out. So that's nice. Now looking at the earbuds themselves, you'll see they sit really nicely in there. And again, aluminum chamfer right around where the earbuds sit in to give it a nice premium aesthetic on the case. And the earbuds themselves are not especially large, but they're definitely not that small compared to some other earbuds. So when you put them in your ear, you see they fit reasonably well they don't stick out too far and they don't look too bad i think they're smaller than some of the older earbuds we saw but they're definitely not as compact as maybe like the jabras or the galaxy buds for example which are generally tighter into your ear now these are definitely more compact than the previous generation of these same earbuds but like i said not the smallest now looking at the earbud itself starting on the outside we have a microphone i believe that's a microphone on the left side right there then we have our touchpad in the middle with the bno logo right there so if you single tap the left bud, you get transparency mode. I'll talk more about that in just a minute. But if you double tap, you get the previous track. If you triple tap, nothing happens. And then if you tap and hold, that's your volume control for either bud. Now, if you double tap the right bud, you go forward a track, of course. If you single tap the right bud, player pause. And then the right bud, strangely does have triple tap. So I don't know why they didn't have triple tap on both buds, but the right one summons your voice assistant. So Google, Siri, whatever you're using. Then looking at the bottom of the earbud, we have our second microphone right there. So these do have two microphones on either earbud, which should be better for sound quality when you're on a phone call. So I'll test that out in a minute and we'll see how good these actually sound. So looking at the interior part of the bud, you'll see that we have two indents. Those are your locating features when you drop it in the case to line up the little nodes onto the pogo pins in there. That's how you charge it. Then above that, we have our little LED right there. And that's really all you see right there. And my complaint here is that these do not have a proximity sensor, which for $350, I really did expect to have that extra sensor in there. So these don't have an auto play, auto pause feature. If you take them out of your ears, they don't automatically pause. At least from my testing, I have confirmed that that's not, they don't automatically pause. That's definitely a really big drawback in my opinion for earbuds that are this expensive. That's something you see on like 
sub $100 level earbuds. There are four different sizes for the silicone ear tips in the box. And then there's also a pair of foam tips as well. So no matter what your ear shape is, these should be fitting pretty well in your ear. And as far as comfort goes, I find that when you put them in, of course you have to do like the slight twist as you do with most earbuds. These definitely, they feel pretty good. They're not really too intrusive or uncomfortable, but I will also say if you're going for a run with these, you can expect them to kind of lift and fall out a little bit as you start to run faster. It's something I found, but just for general, if you're sitting at a desk or walking or just doing some basic work, you probably won't have an issue with these falling out. But like I said, these are definitely not designed for working out, although they do actually have water resistance. So if you are going for a run and you're sweating or if it's raining outside, you shouldn't have to worry about these. They're IP54 water resistant. So that's nice. Okay, so we're outside right now next to a road. So we'll see how good these earbuds actually sound when there's traffic. You can see some cars going by behind me. So if I was talking on a phone, this is what it would sound like. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. So let's talk a little bit more about the internal components on these earbuds. The first really nice feature is they have Bluetooth 5.1, which is the next iteration of Bluetooth. So most good earbuds on the market today have Bluetooth 5.0. Unfortunately, a big complaint I have with these earbuds is that for the price point at $350, they do not have active noise cancellation, which I think really drops them back in the competition here. As we see so many other earbuds on the market today that are this price or even lower have really good active noise cancellations. You know, I know not everybody is going to use active noise cancellation, but all things considered, I really do wish they added that or else they lowered the price on these earbuds. So otherwise they actually do have transparency mode, which is nice if you single tap the left earbud, like I said, you can go into transparency mode and it does sound pretty natural. I found that you hear your surroundings very well. With transparency mode, they definitely do have a little bit more white noise and almost a little bit of crackling here and there. And it's something that I've been hearing with this, not just with transparency mode, but also when they're just not in transparency mode, there is some white noise in the background. And I'll talk about that when we get into the sound quality analysis later on in the video, but otherwise, they do not have an autoplay auto pause feature like I said there is no multi pairing with these which is definitely a very unfortunate thing right there and then lastly they don't have single point connection which means that you have a master slave bud type system here which is pretty common we see that in the Sennheiser buds as well and it's not my favorite way to do things I wish they had single point and just to explain what I mean instead of having either earbud work independently you have to have the right one out of the case in order for the left one to work because the right one connects to your phone or whatever you're listening to and the left one connects to the right one. So there are a couple drawbacks with that related to battery life and connection strength. So let's get into the app now. You can see here, it's a very simple app. They just show the earbuds right there. If we tap on the Bang & Olufsen E8 right there, brings us into the controls we have. So you can control the volume right there with a the little slider. That's kind of cool. They show you what's playing. You can hit play, pause and skip songs from the app if you really wanted to. There are different listening modes, which is essentially your EQ right here. So you can go to optimal, optimal commute, clear podcast. Like they're not super descriptive, but if you want something more descriptive, you can go into the little circular EQ right here. So if we go back, then we can go down surroundings. Like I said, this is transparency mode and you can turn it up and down. There's three different settings here, but I really don't hear much of a difference. I really just leave it off for the most part. Then we can go down automatic standby. So you can enable that, which means that they just turn off after 15 minutes without being used. And other than that, that's pretty much all you're really going to be doing in the app here. So let's talk about the sound quality. The codex, first of all, this has AAC, SBC, and Qualcomm Aptex. I love to see Aptex in there. It should sound really good. And unfortunately, the first drawback is that these do have a slight hiss pretty much no matter what. If your music's paused, if you're listening to a podcast or quieter music, you definitely will, or at least I am distracted by that. But louder music, you may not notice it. Now, talking about the sound quality itself, these are pretty bright sounding earbuds and they are a little bit thin right out of the box. They are pretty flat. So you can go into the EQ on the app like I showed you and you can adjust that but I found that they could use a little bit more instrument separation. It's not perfect in that aspect. And they are definitely less full sounding, especially compared to something like the Sennheiser Buds, which I very recently reviewed. So admittedly, these are being compared to a pretty high standard there. But like I said, a little bit less full sounding and more focused with a spotlight on the higher vocals and the snares. So at some point there is almost a little bit too much emphasis on snares. So you can adjust that in the EQ and you adjust it. I found workout EQ gives you a little bit more of a rumbly bass and it does give you, you know, some pretty good rumble there. It's definitely not nearly what we saw with the Jabra Elites, of course. The 75Ts give you an insane, like a seismic bass. 
These won't give you quite that much, but definitely a pretty good rumble there. Although it does get a little bit muddy and slightly more distant sounding, being that you're essentially maxing the bass on these when you adjust the EQ so it's in workout mode. And there's definitely less detail on bass and low vocals, but there's an emphasis on the higher vocals. So overall, I would say, I know that was a lot to say about the audio quality, but they sound decent. They sound pretty good. And if these were somewhere around 200 to $240, I would say they sound really good. But at $350, that kind of price point without active noise cancellation and with a few other things missing, I think that I was expecting sound quality to be a little bit better than it actually is. So with that being said, of course, if the price goes down, take this, you know, of course, with scale, being that the price points is high, I'm giving it a slightly more harsh criticism on the sound quality. So that was a lot of information, but let's break it down into the pros and cons and see who these earbuds were actually designed for. And starting off with the pros, the first thing I really like about these, of course, is the leather exterior. I love how smooth and soft it is. It's a really nice design. It looks really nice. And it's something we don't see in many other earbuds. And then combine that with the high gloss aluminum chamfer right there. And you have a really premium looking pair of earbuds here. Now, other things I like, I really like that they have Bluetooth 5.1. Looking forward, that's really nice to start pushing for the next iterations of Bluetooth. The super battery in here is just something I really like. 35 hours is something that it could easily last you an entire week or more, assuming you listen like five hours a day. Wireless charging is something that I think every pair of earbuds out there should have now. And then lastly, they have very little lag. If I'm listening to music, I'm playing games, I'm watching videos, I found that the lag is not a big deal with these, especially compared to like the Sennheiser True Wireless 2s here. I noticed that if I listen to them both simultaneously, the audio definitely leads on the, on the Bang & Lofsen right here. Now getting over to the cons, unfortunately this list is a little bit longer, but keep in mind, I am judging these based on the price point. If these were to drop to $250, everything would change a little bit, but just keep in mind, I'm judging them a little bit more harshly being that they're such a high price point. So the first thing that is a drawback is the no active noise cancellation, as I mentioned before, the no autoplay auto pause feature. I think that's a really weird thing they kept out of these. No find my buds feature. So if you lose these, there is no chirping sound they're gonna make. There's no uh, like GPS you can do in the app. I don't know why they didn't add that. It seems like a really easy thing to do. There, there is some white noise and some hissing that's in the earbuds pretty much all the time, which is a pretty big drawback actually, in my opinion, regardless of the price point. The audio quality is definitely good on these, but it's far from great in my opinion, being that like, you know, they have app decks, so they definitely should be sounding really good, but just the balance isn't quite there in my opinion. Then there is no single point connection. And lastly, you cannot customize the earbud controls. So combine all of that and is it worth it? And who is this actually for? I think really the only people that would be getting these earbuds would be somebody who's not necessarily an audio audiophile, somebody who's not necessarily like an audio connoisseur looking for like the best feature set in a pair of earbuds, but somebody who wants to be more premium and kind of flex something that's expensive then I could definitely see you buying these mainly because they have like the nice leather exterior and they charge wirelessly. So that would kind of fit a very specific group of people, but most people out there looking for just a great pair of earbuds and you're looking to spend money to get a really, really good pair of earbuds. I would say there may be some better ones out there. So overall guys, that's my opinion of the Bang & Olufsen E8 third generation earbuds after using them for a while. So let me know what you guys think of them. If you have them, comment any observations you might've made that I maybe missed in this video. And if you don't have them, let me know what you think, if you're gonna buy them or not and why. So as always guys, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.